hearing that music straight up, just hear me like that Home Alone 2 flashback. <laughs> it's a Christmas theme in the air here at Knock Off episode. Uh, we're here. There's a crew here. We're going un- unconventional style. We've got that party atmosphere. Balloon, party podcast. Balloons on party the table. Cast. It is the first official Christmas special. Knockoff podcast Christmas special coming at you. It's a year in review Christmas special. Merry Christmas to our listeners. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a thank you episode as well. We come to you with fucking plenty of gratitude. You've stuck with us throughout our first year. This is our first Christmas together. Boys, we're in the presence of greatness here. We've got our top three download guests <laughs> as per popular <laughs> man. Better luck next year, Drew Mitchell, where you at? <laughs> Thanks for that exposure, baby, but those Let's numbers go, didn't translate, son. <laughs> Joined by... This week on Under the Bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. G- getting it out of the way we, earlier. We've got Christmas. a big list, yeah, folks. Yeah. It's the end of the year. We've got a lot of people to throw under the bus no in this episode. No one's safe. We're going to so. fuck Plenty. this all yeah. up. <laughs> Your time will come eternal, MMA. <laughs> Joined to my right... Knock off regulars, Chris, Danny. What up? What's well, cracking? <laughs> In front of me, uh, knock off, basically regular now, Kyle Steven. Sup, knockout nation. <laughs> Benny. Sup, baby. And uh, coming back to throw down after the hiatus, uh, it was brief, brief stint from him, but an enjoyable one talking about his boss's wife's titties. Uh, the the uh, B, B-Rad back in the crib. Uh, yeah, what's going that on? Might, that might go down for story of the year. I it think, was. Yeah. It's, uh, it's up there in the it's nomination. In he, got, he got his name in lights. He got, uh, it's funny when, you, when you're podcasting and you get, uh, you get Grab you, your friends or other people. Uh, it's funny what people come up and ask you sometimes, like, what about this guy with this man? What did he do with that? Like, you know, when you put it like, yeah, man, he, he he asked it. Like, there's no shit. And you, and you you really don't need to like hang around our friends too long to realise that our mates have some pretty fucked up stories. Like, they, 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 they and get, not afraid they, to share them. They get, exactly. Like whether whether you're allowed to tell them or whether you're not allowed to tell them, your like our group of friends seem to you know get into some stuff that that's fairly entertaining. For around, around it makes for a more interesting person, I think. It, de- it definitely <laughs> yeah, does. I don't want. Does. I don't want to be friends with anybody that doesn't have any skeletons in their yeah. closet. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> our, our sort of connection seems to really embrace the silly season as well. I mean, we got. We're in Christmas week now. We're winding it down. As an adult as well, it doesn't feel like Christmas. Like none of us at the table currently have any children. So it's just adults now just grinding. It's just another day to get on the sauce and indulge yourself in consumerism and eating a lot of food. But <laughs> <laughs> So there's, uh, either, there's either the married life with children yeah, yeah. In, in the burbs or being yeah, an alcoholic that's right, yeah. drug addict. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what, well, yeah, there's those two options yeah. in life, folks. That's and uh, which path are you going to choose? Black or white, guys. Fucking, <laughs> yeah. You know what side of the fence I'm on. I'm black on black crimes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing, though. With, with Christmas... Everyone gets together and enjoys time with their nearest mm. and dearest, but there can be some fucking howlers on Christmas Day. Not everyone's families get along on Christmas oh, Day and shit like that too, throw yeah. alcohol in the mix. Like any, any of you boys here got any nightmare stories about sort of Christmas oh, gone man, wrong? I got, or? I, got a, I got a heartbreaker more than, more than a nightmare, but like I remember when I was um, maybe partway through high school and had my own Christmas going on at the house and so did my – no, actually I was with my cousin – I thought I was with my neighbour, but I was with my cousin at the time and uh, and we were just like kicking the footy out on the road or something out the front of like the whole family inside this house. And uh, a dude from my school walked past and he was uh, just like carrying a backpack. And so I like started talking to him and he said he was basically just on his way to fix his mate's computer. His parents didn't really believe in Christmas or he didn't do anything or, or whatever else. And then he just walked on his merry way, man. It was like... <sighs> yeah, they were... <sighs> tough, Buzz tough, Killington. Tough, tough break. Yeah, yeah. Tough Being break for some kids, well. you know. Yeah. That dude must have really needed his computer fixed. Like, yeah. like hey, man, yeah. do you mind coming around on Christmas Day? And fucking my, my uh, hard drive seems to be tweaking up a bit. Like. I can remember early days like trick-or-treating on people's houses and, and th- that being too far ahead of that sort of type of thing's time for Australia. <laughs> Particularly and because it's a Halloween tradition, not a Christmas <laughs> tradition. No, no, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> Any you, leftover turkey, big dog? You, like, you, you, <laughs> trick or treat, like what the hell is December? You can understand a Halloween thing, but Christmas, Christmas is a whole different box of frogs. Like. If, you're, if you're vandalising people's houses, you mean? Or like throwing eggs nah, and stuff? Nah, just, just in terms of like for the, the general masses of getting into it. I've got a uh, horror story from... Uh, one Christmas Eve, one time, it was probably eight, 18, 19 years old. It became a, a tradition of the like my, my older brother and my old man would get together and get on the sauce really hard on Christmas Eve, wake up with a bit of a hangover on Christmas Day and you know how you have those three or four beers when you are hungover and you just sort of press press through and it's like, oh, I feel, feel great again sort of thing. Hair of the dog. Absolutely. And uh, got on the sauce on Friday night, was sitting out the backyard and for all 
Australian listeners will know what we're talking about. For the internationals, we bought a uh, carton of VB stubbies, like a, a Australian lager and a bottle, uh, a 1.125 mil uh, bottle of Bundy rum. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the backyard. Ended up, long story short, ended up getting completely alter ego and somewhat violent. <laughs> when, uh, just put Wh- which a, a the, redi- As a side note, that alcohol is known for, to uh, do oh, to people. Seriously, and not that sort of guy normally, like as mm. you guys would attest to, but... A uh, couple yeah, of champagnes. Yeah, sugar cane <laughs> champagnes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dust, dusted a bunch of the VB sitting in the pool, got to the point where you couldn't drink any beer anymore, so you just go and drink rum. And uh, older brother has gone, because uh, oh, I'm just going just gonna to go for a piss. He goes, goes out the front yard, and he's that, uh, that intoxicated that he just passes out in the front yard like, <laughs> o- o- on the grass next to the car. Like sitting out, <laughs> sitting out the front, he's that blind. What time is this? Uh, oh, I c- couldn't, e- couldn't even tell you, but it was, it was dark, but pro- probably not that late because it was an Arvo session. Went out the front. Oh no! I'm wondering where he was. He seems to be taking forever, so I'm getting more riled and more and more riled up. I'm the little brother, and I'm there being able to drink more than him. I'm like, where? Where is he? Is he? Has he gone to sleep? <laughs> gone out and passed out in the front yard. I'm, I'm on you just, cook or something, just, mate. just a tyrant in him. Like, you are a fucking pussy. Where the fuck is he? Isn't anyone gonna fucking stay up and drink? <laughs> just old ego in front of my little like, dear old mum and dad. They're like, True Christmas spirit. W- woke up on the uh, on the Saturday and. Uh, <laughs> Devilish hangover And mum goes Do you get Like that often When you drink alcohol Like, <laughs> oh, like Disappointed Because I'm still a young guy Not really that exposed to, Like, do you, do you get like that Often when you drink I'm like Oh no no Like never You must like, be oh, a ball so. Like to get on the piss with Meanwhile Tyrant They've got like your, your dad And your brother And your mum And everyone Like yeah. and a priest Sitting in the, the, the living yeah, room like, yeah. Is there an in- intervention At on the you? same time though But it's like Oh no no Not often Oh what time is it 9.30 at Christmas Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there it is. Like, get that buzz on by twelve. Yeah. Fuck. You boys are uh, you Chris boys. And I, nah. Chris and I, one year, uh, we were staying up pretty late, and I think it, it, for a, for a long time, like when we were kids, it was sort of tradition. We'd stay up pretty late on Christmas Eve, mm. just because you could, and everybody else would be in bed. Like, still, everybody's at the house, like you, like our whole family, and um, yeah, just up super late, and uh, decided to. Um, Move the Christmas tree from basically like where it had been kept our entire lives. Like had two living rooms. At we this, were maybe this, this place. Born. We, we were maybe eight, <laughs> <laughs> no. eight, eighteen and twenty. I sunk a lounge room if I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So so you know the so you know we the we picked up all the presents and the tree and all the decorations and carried them into the sunken lounge room, and so we we pretty much completely forgot about it and went to sleep. And then when we woke up, everybody was already up and tri- tripped the fuck out when they woke up because they thought we'd been jacked. And, like, they were saying that they were fully going through the motions of, like, you know, you think this happens, like... Yeah, it does happen to some It happens people. to other people, yeah. but you don't ever think it's going to happen oh, to you. Yeah. and oh, yeah. Sticky bandits. <laughs> <laughs> Home Alone 2 fans out. <laughs> Harry and Marv turn up to fucking... Yes. Deckle. Can, can you imagine being that <laughs> decrepit of a human being that you'd be willing to do that, that somebody's Christmas? It'd be out there. Yeah, they'd, oh, yeah. they'd definitely be, be out sure. there, you know? Just jump in someone's window and do a and e and steal little Haley's, yeah. you know? Like, powerful yeah, documentary, that Home Alone player. 2, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I was in tears at the end of that, bro. Seriously, It, man, it hit me hard. Those guys, those that guys would be heart, fucking like, dead that many oh, times over. Dude. Oh, that, <laughs> some of the, like, he blatantly got electrocuted. Mar- Harry, yeah. oh, Marv did, Marv did. Yeah. So many of those things, and then and then in the very next scene, obviously that's the beauty of show business. But in the very next scene, he's a little bit bruised up, but he's he's back, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then meanwhile, he's just taken a fucking lead pipe like being swung <laughs> down from like a, a, a stair banister, like just getting just hit getting, in the mouth with a couple of paint yeah, tins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what oh. The sound you've heard was a tool chest screaming <laughs> <laughs> down the stairs. Oh, such a good It has movie. to be the best Christmas movie for me. Easily. Yeah, yeah Easily. definitely up there. I think man. it's Daylight Second. What's what's the next best Christmas movie? Elf. Bad Santa, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Muppets Christmas Carol. Muppets yeah. Christmas Carol. Elf. Miracle on 34th Street. Miracle on 34th Street. I can remember watching that a, a few times as a, as a kid. For me, it's uh, it's Home Alone one and two or bust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon oh, as yeah. Macaulay Culkin was off the scene, the f- like franchise or whatever you want to call it went to shit. Off, yeah. off the scene and off the rails. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. oh, Merry Christmas, Macaulay. <laughs> yeah. If you're out there, like, man, that's, best that's, child actor ever. That's yeah. absolutely, man. 
And Shout out, imagine Rich. being imagine being thrust into the fucking limelight at that age of your life. Wonder how much of his dough, dough he still held on to. Either of you boys ever seen Getting Even with Dad? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Ted Danson. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would have been ca- as you say, it's a beast Chris, of a man. He would have been cashed up as oh, fuck at that time. But yeah, I, I, I believe man. that uh, heroin it was, heroin I, will take your money though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Like that's that's been alleged. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I'll just cover your ass with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I heard he got divorced from his uh, his parents, mate. You know, yeah, yeah. like Allegedly. he divorced. So yeah, so no, I think I think that'd be fact. Like, I, um, <laughs> but we'll throw I mean, it out I think, anyway. I think that'd be fact. Yeah, yeah see, yeah. I think. Like, yeah. he was I, don't, I don't know girl. anything. Yeah. I think that yeah. that's a, it's a thought, not a statement. Like, <laughs> he's arguably in the <laughs> <laughs> unquestionably, arguably in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's unquestionable that it's time. arguable. <laughs> 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 he's a, what, one of the best child actors. What's Macaulay Culkin doing for Christmas? Cocaine. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably a whole bunch of H. Yeah, I don't know. Unless, <laughs> unless he's been, unless he's just been slamming just, a bunch yeah. of hammer like. <laughs> on the on the nod hard Christmas day. <laughs> just be wearing a warm blanket all day. <laughs> oh, that's we'll put toasty. it this way: he hasn't had to work in a fucking very long time, man. Mm. Like you haven't seen him in anything really as an adult. Do those movies still make you money, obviously? Or? Fuck yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Right. Yeah. He would still be getting a cut oh, of small, the whole thing, right? small yeah. Fuck yeah, man. at this stage, though, surely. But everyone well, still that, watches that's, it. That's the People thing. People still buy it, like Channel 7 still buy it, like Channel 9 or whatever the thing. Oh, he yeah. would get, be getting some sort of cut, yeah. Like, yeah. that's the thing with, you know, music artists and record labels and film companies and actors and shit like that. It's everybody getting, you know, a piece of something that's... I guess it takes all of those people to make it. Like Macaulay Culkin doesn't exist without, you know, the the correct mm. film company and all of that sort of shit. That's but it. that's like I know there's rules around musicians whenever their songs played on radio or digital radio, you know, they get the data from all of those downloads and all that sort of shit. Anytime it's aired, they get royalties through like a, an artist's association or something like that. So there would be the same thing for, for actors when their movies are shown on, you know, network television and all that sort of shit, you would have to assume. It says here he's got 15 million, so he's de- definitely not hurting for a Exactly, grass, exactly. Know? So he can just hole up in his like Californian ranch and allegedly mm. do as much blow on H as he likes. Mm. Exactly. Speedballs. But he's managed not to die, man. How old How old is <laughs> Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> good, on, yeah. good on him. <laughs> Hats off, Macaulay. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm <laughs> saying? If somebody's, if somebody's, right? if somebody's like, you know, it's like, uh, who's the guy that played Truman Capote um, that died of heroin Philip overdose? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. You know, like eventually dr- mm. drugs, if, if it's proper addiction, I'm good for a beer, thanks, man, um, will catch you. He's you 27 know? next year, though. He joins that club. Is he really? No, no. Is he Ma- Macaulay. Young? No, he's he's older allegedly. than us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Macaulay would yeah. be uh, banging on the door of uh, forty. Ooh. Oh, shit. How, how old's Macaulay? Do Fact anyone check. want to throw out their picks? I'm going to say he's 1980, 1980. I was going to okay. say thirty-six. So he's like thirty-six. 30 thirty-six. Oh, twenty-seventeen. That's the arithmetic yeah. on the knockoff. He's no, thirty-something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thirty odd, mate. Uh, yeah, see, I was close. <laughs> oh, uh, mate, you gave yourself a decade there. Like. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Boxing day is always massive in this circle as well too. You wake up after that Christmas day, you've eaten yourself to the gills, you've drank an absolute gutload of piss, and we then, then you're back, then you're back uh, up for like a hard day. We were only that. talking the other day when we were like. 18 maybe so 10 years ago basically one boxing day where we had a whole bunch of um like people that knew each other extended so it was kind of like a generational gap like brothers and shit like that so we ended up having this footy game like full tackle just basically mugby sort of styles Mm. on on the on the oval of old guys versus young guys and it started to rain and everybody just went fucking wild until like there were some big shots put on we're only discussing there was like a really bad spear tackle between (laughs) two two of our friends yeah, there was, there was. It was sort of like the analogy, you know, where MMA fighters worst, fought. Yeah, worst tackle, mate. It, it was it was horrific. Yeah. The situation where two MMA fighters fight each other and become good friends. These two guys had only met that day, and we go back to the old high school uh, football ground where we used to play. And as Danny said, it started pissing down rain, so it turned from cricket into footy. These two blokes that had only just met each other that day. Shout out Keg yeah. and Mizzle. Miz- Those Keg are and Mizzle. Pretty anonymous names. That's so. right. Yeah, they ain't no tracking that down, son. <laughs> They had uh, Mizzle goes like the typical catch pass situation in rugby where he catches the ball, goes quickly to pass it to his winger. 
Keg shoots in late around the midsection and does the the worst spear tackle I've ever seen in my life. And I don't throw that around lightly because we've seen guys break, break their necks in sort of contact sport now and things like that. The worst spear tackle ever. And uh, <laughs> the bloke that was on the receiving end was fucking filthy. <laughs> like, he was, and he rightfully was, so. Uh, and Keg can tackle. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was yeah. it was a it was a masterclass of uh, of things, but of how to spear. That that was that was a wild boxing day. So that turned into dudes trying to like get even from high school, like people fucking yeah. spraying each other in high school and stuff. But I went to uh went to a cricket ground on another boxing day in oh what what year was that, Danny at uh, at Marchant there probably. March in Park in Brisbane. 11? Two thousand two, nah, 10. No, 10. 2009 or 10 probably. Yeah, 10. It 10. We go, uh, we drive to a, a, a cricket field, traditional Boxing Day thing, go and have cricket. Bought a, uh, everyone bought a bunch of piss, but everyone also, it was basically mandatory to turn up with a carton of vodka cruisers. So people are having cruiser challenges at that point, yeah. like they're going out of fashion. So there's four people, a cruiser challenge to explain mm. to anybody listening is there's four people to a carton, so four six yeah. beers each essentially four yep. six packs and uh it's the first team, team to finish to the entire yeah. carton so therefore if you've sculled your six and somebody else in your team still hasn't sculled you can help them scull theirs so you just make it disappear that's but the goal it's basically uh the- uh induced vomiting session yeah it, sound, it sounds easy in theory but the gas just gets to you though you can't scull yeah. that many soft drinks like they're basically soft drinks with a splash how much, of alcohol i wonder how much sugar you're on board oh, fuck load. In that. Oh, fuck load. hundreds right. hundreds like, yeah. and hundreds of and hundreds. grams yeah maybe, it would be maybe even a thousand grams there would yeah they're dead sad because yeah. there would have to be at least 50 like 15 15 teaspoons of sugar probably yeah. in each one yeah. Like. yeah super carbonated too yeah. oh, super just, physically hard it, down. it would just mm. make you throw up but one of the one of the funniest things that, that happened that day everyone's doing this throwing up everywhere just one of those boys day where it's just complete debauchery uh one of the one of the boys that was there a mate of ours was uh practice like just pretending like we'd pretend to hit a cricket ball and it's backed onto a main road so the cars are doing 70 kilometers an hour along this road and we've blatantly got all of our eskies and our piss out so it looks like we're having a piss up there Boys, one of the boys, it was dead set one of the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. It was <laughs> one of those ones you'll take to the grave with you where you just won't forget it. Was they were pretending to hit a cricket ball and he was pretending to like into the traffic by accident. Like, oh, there's a ball running. And he was just pretending to sprint. <laughs> like he knew where the yeah. car was, he but fully, he was looking yeah, backwards. Fully like. comprehended like where it was, but was pretending not to look at the vehicle. Like <laughs> pretending to laugh back at the boys while sprinting full pace <laughs> into the traffic, but then would pull himself up. And this one forward Falcon man just slit, locked up the brakes, swerved real hard, like big fishtail in the middle of the road doing like 70. He goes, you fucking idiot! <laughs> like, to, like to this guy, and we're like, oh, it, 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 it killed everyone there. After everyone was that intoxicated, everyone was fucking wa- wasted, and he's pretending to sprint into the traffic. Oh, it was one of the funniest things I've e- who ever is, seen. Who is that? Sam. Oh, uh, Sam. Sam. You, you'd know Sam. There was Sam. Sam's pretty broad. You'd, yeah. Oh, dude. One of the funniest things Allegedly. you've ever done. Multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It, there wasn't just one highlight moment. There were many. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just got to the point where he was running along the side of the road and we'd just like... Dur! Little, yeah, yeah. little just, duck in, <laughs> and then the car would just swerve. Oh, right? and so oh, dangerous! Just, oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. dangerous! Definitely could have, so, uh, could could have not. He wasn't going to hurt himself because he knew when to pull up, but he just hurt others. And man, that's I, I can remember um, s- similar sort of crew. I think Sam, uh, I think Sammy might have been there at one stage, and and Ash had his this that old. What are those like big wide bodied XF Falcons? Falcons. Yeah, XF Falcons, big white one, and. Um, and what, like we were push starting it or whatever, and and somebody like jumped up on the the back of it, and and we drove. Fuck, who was that? I don't know. But anyway, drove like at about probably up to forty or fifty kilometers an hour before they sort of fell off the back and just like full tum like full tumble along the asphalt, and and you realise how banged up you get in that sort of instance. Eh? like imagine getting hit on your pushy. Like oh, like at a on a, at a high speed sort of vehicle accident mm. type spec thing, you'd just be mincemeat, eh? Be like uh, that shot that hospital ball from Kimbo Slice. I reckon. Oh, for, for that like, is uh, just velocity wise would be similar to mm. getting hit by a car at a certain pace. Surely, brain injury. Surely, that was fucking Surely. stupid. That guy. <laughs> 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 you got five hundred bucks for it. Five hundred bucks. That's, yeah. that's all he got. Is that all he got? Too much information. Fuck. Fuck! What, what do you reckon was your TDI. like out of uh, out of U- UFC for 2016? Your your biggest like hectic injury or knockout TDI or like 
it's just been such a he- dramatic uh, car crash. Like, holy shit, did you see that? Uh, Dan Hendo, Hector Lombard. That came. Yeah, that, that that elbow. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's right up there. Uh, um, I was up there. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, Yoel uh, Romero. That neon Weidman. <laughs> That was yeah. a car crash. Was fucking yeah. big, man. That was big. That looked fucking painful, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Man, there, there's been so, so many. Maybe even like Anthony Rumble Johnson on Glover. Oh, yeah, forgot about right. that. Just, See you later. Just absolutely. A guy, a guy who's never been stopped in 13 seconds to get his front tooth knocked out in a mouth guard. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh. And it, just the velocity that that dude must uncork his punches at is just scary. It's just such a sport with that many just sort of Complete oh mm. fuck type of moments, but so, so many to record. Really, I saw Rashad posted on his um on his Insta the other day, uh, like this huge like hematoma that he had on the top of his head from just getting in a from just sparring AJ. Fuck, like uh, that would not be f- a fun a fun way to train. That's it. Because you be a sparring incident gone wrong for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't spar hard. Like, oh, well, who knows? Even when he's gone, everybody's like, different. Be, I think. Yeah. yeah. How can you? Like caught that power, like he just oh, let exactly. it off. Like, oh, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah. mate. Like I knocked you. Yeah. Sorry. You just try and get it there quickly, and then all of a sudden your training partner's unconscious, and you're like, mm. oh. Shit. It was interesting sorry. to hear John Jones talk about like the different training partners that come into Jackson's and oh, stuff really? like that, because they have a pretty sort of open door policy for people who are willing and eager to learn and stuff right. like that, who have shown a bit of, um, you know, they've they've studied somewhere else for a little bit, and then they've come there or whatever. But um, he was saying that he gets a vibe that there's a lot of guys that will want to come in and just sort of make a name for himself mm. by sparring with John Jones. Say that, you know, I fucking knocked John Jones out in the in the gym or whatever. So he, he was sort of saying his way of dealing with it is the second there's any kind of like, you know, weirdness. over the top weirdness, whatever mm. it may be, that he just he just feels a vibe that's like, oh, shit. Like he's What's like, okay, good, good training, man. Like shakes his hand, but like I'll never train with him again. Like that's it. Uh. He, he said he had a lot of problem. This would happen. This would be widespread as well, where he had he'll have people coming to Jackson's where they have basically an open mat there where they can turn up and you can try out. Mm. So he'll have people there. He's like, I hate when people come up on day one when they haven't earned any stripes at all. Hey, John, can I have a photo? Thanks, champ. Just put on <laughs> their on, on their Insta. Just train with the champ. Like I'm here. Uh. We're here. We're here with the goat at training. And it's like. Bitch, we didn't train. Like you just you asked me, there, you just yeah. kissed my ass after that for a photo. Like, yeah, fucking right. check yourself. Yeah, yeah you, you need to earn that. Like, you need to take your uh, take your licks in training and get lit up by him a little bit. Yeah, like, absolutely. Chris and I watched uh, a Floyd Mayweather sparring session the other day. Uh, Brad and I watched a bit of that as well. I bought that up again the other day because it was so good. Yeah, against Andre Berto. But before that, what we didn't see. For the 10 minutes that they warmed him up, he went two rounds with uh, essentially a, a sack of meat. A dude. Yeah, he, got, he got to light him up and get his timing down. Can you imagine how much Floyd Mayweather is paying this gimp of his to, uh, to fucking light him up in sparring, basically? Like, this guy didn't throw many shots. He just sort of took Floyd sparring and just w- worked with him. That dude would be getting a check with a lot of zeros on at the end of oh, that camp. He'd, he'd, he'd be getting a couple of grand each, each, each t- time he turned up and took one of those. For Speaking sure. of paychecks, what did you say? Uh, Michelle Waterson got paid for a victory on the end. We should break that card down a little bit. Twenty and twenty, maybe like. fifteen and fifteen. Oh, We're talking. Kidding? This is on Saturday night. The UFC Fight Night card went down. Sacramento, California. They had a headline fight on Fox. Was Michelle Waterson, Paige Van Zant. They've been pushing the Page wagon hard in the UFC of late. She's been on Dancing with the Stars. Good looking girl, super marketable, young. Her opponent and a savage as well, and, and a savage in her own right too. Absolutely, she, she's been she's been winning like came off a highlight reel KO last time around, and actually the the numbers are out for the Fox ratings. Fantastic, apparently. and they killed like Pay, Page and Sage were drew big time. It was the biggest UFC on Fox crowd that they've had in the last three years. Really? Wow! So you can understand why now the new management is starting to push this entertainment model a little bit more, where it's yeah. like we're getting the casuals in now here yeah. in America exactly. that are at home watching yeah. TV, but yeah. Those two, uh, where was I going with that? Uh-huh. Fucking Mickey Gall, man. Oh, yeah, what, she what got fifteen. She got fifteen and fifteen. Sorry, yeah. Michelle Waterson in the main event on the biggest card that they've mm. had ratings wise in three years had fifteen thousand dollars to turn up, and if she lost, she would have made fifteen. But she won, so they matched her win bonus with fifteen thousand dollars. She has to pay tax on that. She breaks that up within her camp, her manager. 
she has a baby as well. Like, what's left of that? You need yeah. to be so no active. How, and when they buy it for $4 billion, man. Yeah. Like, just, how it, it just doesn't I seem think, right, man. The, the UFC need to get ahead of those MMA unions and just introduce that for themselves, mm. I think. They need to just get the right people together and, and come up with the, the structure that the fighters, or at least the majority of the fighters, are willing to sign on for. They just want to worry about making that money back first. They just spent $4.2 billion. Like, yeah. The last thing they want is they have to pay more out while they're trying to make that that's true that's like. true but that sort of seems to just be going backwards in in terms of fighter pay where you've got yeah, the biggest headliner mean. card in in three years yeah. numbers wise yeah you've uh you're getting fifteen thousand. she would have got a bonus probably out the back you reckon like, maybe maybe but even even her sponsor pay with reebok because their pay structure is so fucked she made two and a half thousand yeah, dollars there that that's what's killing gsp at the moment mm. that that's what's killing the gsp deal mm. Is that he? They cannot get the ones and the zeros mm. to work simply based on that new. Rebuttal. And Michelle Watterson, she came out and ran through Paige Van Zandt at the weekend. She yeah. looked really comfortable the whole time, and she Paige, Paige, Paige had a rough. Paige had a rough weight cut where she had to get naked. How was that yeah, uh, judo rough. judo flip? Yeah, the, like Ronda Rousey written trip, all over just, it for that. Yeah, but it's had. Uh, I've often wanted with, with MMA too, and this this is a bit off kilt, but I I thought of this after the fight. Paige had a, a really rough weight cut where she had to get naked at the weigh-ins because, and she still weighed in at one thirty-six, so she couldn't get down to was or was she one fifteen on the weekend or one thirty one fifteen? So she weighed at one sixteen on the weekend. Had, had to get all her gear off to even uh, put a measurement in it. That that's but, about uh, twenty pounds apparently. Really, that's right. But uh, thirty something. I wear. I wondered too where women we saw Misha Tate at UFC two hundred came in and get rammed by Amanda Nunez in that mm. does. Menstruating for women in MMA hinder their performance sometimes when they're having to uh, one cut yeah, weight maybe. and two come out and fight. Yeah, that's oh, true. I mean, one hundred percent, it'd have to man. Like mm. it has such an effect on on that's their it, like, mood and hormonal like. Mm. We'll get back to your levels ne- yeah. and all that sort of stuff. We'll get back to you next week. Like I'll tweet Paige <laughs> after this and yeah. see if she was menstruating. Did and, you, uh, did <laughs> <you>? <laughs> yeah. definitely, definitely an interesting topic yeah. for yeah. six yeah. dudes yeah. on the knockoff MMA yeah. podcast yeah. to try and tackle. Yeah. So, I wonder what, yeah. about it, so what's like? your opinion on this? Yeah, let's talk women <laughs> menstruating and try work that out right now. So, so for all the lady listeners at home, what we reckon? Yeah, Chris, man, I had a guess. Like, what day in the cycle would she have been there like she looked like shit at the weigh-ins man maybe second third like i don't know but that i, th- I think it may have something to do with it anyway that's just where my mind fucking wanders sometimes so about shit, but about it. she looked oh. like shit though man she looked like shit and come out the uh performance before finishes with a highlight real ko mm. of uh beck rawlings that page did and just looks like a fucking yeah. superstar and then just two steps forward three steps back but it, the same night for the youngsters too. The people that they fucking pumped up, pumped their tires up in terms of Paige Van Zandt and Sage Northcutt. Oh, Sage, uh, he quit as well. He had yeah. to tap out. Mickey yeah. Gall got him. And it's good, um, good to see that him announce that he's going to go back to fifty five too. Like, I really like the the fact that he's been so dominant there. You know, if he can get there and he can make it comfortable, comfortably, and he he did post a a photo on his on his Insta of getting to set one seventy and saying that that was easy. But it just comes down to those big gaps that exist between, you know, between between those weight divisions, especially. I liked how um, Sage she saw a different side of him. Like he, oh, he had a bit of mongrel in him, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, yep. Like he wasn't saying thank you, sir. Like Loves he's just that going talk, after yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on. He did because he took, he dropped him. He yeah. cl- he clean dropped him and he was like, because Mickey's asking him to come down to the floor. Obviously, being a jujitsu brown belt. Yeah. Uh, Calling Sa- like calling Sage in, but Sage is like, no, nah, you didn't like them hands, did you? Getting a bit of the ghetto. Sure. Yeah, Sage hands, is only a young guy as well. Like, Absolutely, so. man. And they talked a lot of shit leading up to it. So yeah, and it was good. It was good to see. I reckon him chatting with the Diaz brothers after the fight. That that, that would be a great camp that Sage Northcutt oh, could go to yeah. and and learn a lot of really good skills. Ground game, especially Ground with game those with those guys. Man. Most right, definitely, yeah. that's where it seems to be. The uh, look, Sage can throw some hands for for a young guy, and he's. Like de- decent on his feet, he cracked Mickey mm. Gore clean. Mickey Gore was but, taking uh, him down at will. Well. That's right. There, there's mm. holes in that ground game, and hey, if you're CM, working with the CM punked him a few times. That's right. Exactly, man. If you're going to if you're going to a camp and you're a young yeah. guy, what better camp to go and join the Diaz brothers with? Oh. Nick and Nate Diaz, Gilbert Melendez, Jake Shields, Joe Schilling. Yeah, like, yeah. 
Talk, Andre Ward chiming in from time to time. Like, All you're those people who are going to push you to the limit soak up every that single knowledge. day. Did it not yeah. work for him at TriStar? Because I remember hearing he went up there for a little Apparently while. Apparently his dad allegedly is a cocksucker. Like, mm. you know, like, not, not like, in, in, in <laughs> the literal <laughs> sense. Homosexual. Uh, like, no, shit. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that, yeah. if it, there's, there's, a, there's definitely stuff kicking around. <laughs> kicking around like, Our uh, listeners yeah. all... Haven't, well, heard, haven't heard an out, outbreak we haven't like that since Dolce. Chris is outrageously political. Politically incorrect statements. <laughs> <laughs> but he ju- jump online. There's. What do you mean? Like he's a bad person? No, nah, there's definitely like online articles about like him sort of being in, in the gym with Joe with Joe Schilling. I think might have even been at TriStar when he was up there. Right. Like. Well, anyway, he was up there with some like really really high credentialed sort of kickboxing guy and. And his his dad sort of pulled him out yeah. mid sparring session, and hey Sage, like more j- more jabs, like circle yeah. circle out of that jab more, like yeah. hey dad, like this guy's won five world titles, right? Yeah. Like you mean you, he's all a you've fuck done is sort it, of thing, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, just just over 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 coaches his son is is real overbearing in his career, yeah. you know, is just too too involved. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you some cards here for the 2016 sort of year in review for the UFC. They've started they started 2016 with a fucking bang. He, listen to this run of cards that they had. Basically, arguably the fight of the year. It's in contention. Robbie Lawler, Carlos Condit kicked off the year on the 2nd of January. Wow. In a like, five-round fight, which was one of the biggest wars you've ever seen, yeah, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it was Rob, Robbie Lawler, that, we've seen him lose since then again, against that T. Woody. got cracked. But uh, he might even be uh, – that, that might even oh, – that, well, that might no, have taken was... some miles off the clock on, uh, on Robbie Lawler. Oh. Followed the lip was um, the Rory, Rory McDonald, McDonald. Rory McDonald. But still took plenty of damage same, in this same one. Same year. Yeah. When's Rory coming back? Like, well, he's be- Bellator, smell it all, man. Yeah, he's he's uh, smell it all. You got um, two weeks he's after that. He's Bellator now. You serious? Yeah. 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 yeah he's, he's over, man. Rory McDonald, he's over no, in the Bellator. I'm, I mean, Rory. I mean, Robbie. Uh, uh, he's talking. Oh. There's talk, smoke he around him Nate fighting Diaz. Nah, Nick, Nick Diaz at Nick. UFC 209 for the rematch. But two weeks after that, TJ Dillashaw, Dom Cruz. Dom took back what was rightfully his in a razor-thin decision against Great that. Fight. Then we went to Johnny Hendricks, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Well, that, that sort of starts coming the year. Out, that, that coming was out it. party for Wonderboy. It was, man. He, he came out to all of his friends and family and uh, everyone was really supportive of him. So Push your hats up. off for uh, coming out, Wonderboy. Well done, man. Mm. <laughs> he came out. Uh, Wonder Boy came out. Just man. Implying he's off. Johnny didn't look good in that fight too. <laughs> implying, not not saying he is, but alleging. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anderson Silva, Michael Bisping. That was a motherfucker. Did you watch that fight, Brad? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That was fucking. Anderson Silva won that fight, in my opinion. Ooh. If you base it on damage, yep. if it's, it, it's if arguable. You, if you, you watch fight, that, the uh, fight was over. If you watch that fight happen outside a nightclub, Anderson Silva wins that fight. Mm. You're dead right. Uh, he outworked them, I thought, though. Ten, ten, ten point must. It, that's mm. Bisping's MO, man. What he a, outworked what people. What a year for Bisping. At, what what a year. He's right up, there for, right up there for fighter of the year. Look, look at the he names did, that Bisping has beat this year. Yeah, he got it he twice He finally already. got his props, Bisping. Man. Yeah, he got what yeah. he deserved. He has strung them together at the right time. Fox fighter of the year. He's a brash, pommy bastard, Michael Bisping, but... He uh, finally got the respect he deserves. No one has won more fights in the UFC than Michael Bisping. Yeah. And, and he's got 12 pounds of gold around his waist yeah. now to... Uh, what's yeah. he, what's his... Uh, how does he stack up for, like, amount of fights as well in oh, the UFC? It's, it's, is he one of the highest? He's definitely 27 and something. It would be high, but, yeah, his winning percentage is it's high like 40 too. 40 fights, so. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, he wouldn't, wouldn't have had that many. Like, maybe, like, three, 400 fights. Like, uh, imagine that. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, the toilet... Uh, Straight after that, too, two week, a, a week after that, the next weekend, we had Silver Bisping into Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz one. That that would probably be mine, man. That's that, one that, of the highlights. I, of, that's I one of the highlights of the whole I was calendar. For that and everything. It is. It's one of those moments too where you Mom, you saw yeah. you saw Nate take his back and yeah. like Left he's in notice too. He's right? in deep. Yeah, he was on a boat in Cabo, St. Lucas before Shots. that comes out, takes out Conor McGregor. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable! Just when he rocked him, oh, and you saw saw yeah. him get wobbled. You saw that whole hype train get wobbled. Yep. Yeah. You saw him like gassed. You saw a lot him of tired. people's a lot of people's walls were coming Stepping down at that back point. Back and eh? just taking deep breaths, and then ding ding, he'd hit him with another two, and then like, he was starting oh, to goad him. And it so was you're like, wrestling oh, now, eh? Shit! Like <laughs> steam forward to you go fast forward to when June. Was, uh, when was when did Ronda Rousey? Lose November to Holly 2015. Holm. November 15. Yeah, yeah. So because it felt like we were on a string of a lot of. 
crazy big upsets like yeah. that. Yeah, we fifteen won. into sixteen was the years of upsets. Mate, speaking of upsets, I, I went, went forward year. to uh, to June two June four two thousand and sixteen from live from Inglewood. Michael Bisping took the strap off Luke Rockhold on that card. That was a, and that was one of the biggest. Bisping. That, that was, was for one. mine the uh, the best card of, we've seen this year. Mm. Was that card? See, someone saw his Rolex lately. That Bisping. was one nine nine, wasn't one, it? UFC pay per view one nine nine. You're dead right. A uh, couple of fights on that worth mentioning. Uh, Brian T. City Ortega versus Guida was a hell of a fight. Yeah, mm. Guida with that late comeback. Uh, Ortega with that late comeback. Sorry, Gu- mm. Guida was out Finished out working him. him. Dustin Poirier, Bobby Green, oh. old man Dan Henderson, Hector, Hector Lombard. Lombard. In, oh, that was like, fireworks. Yeah. If you want to, if if anybody wants to pull up something on their Fight Pass TV subscription, if it's on there, fucking look up Dan Henderson versus Hector Lombard. It is one of the craziest back and forth exchanges of, of just huge back dramatic and middleweights who have ever gone. Dr- Vi- just violent. dramatic moments throughout that entire thing, and it's. First time he was not relatively out. short. Yeah. Oh, oh very yeah. Short. It was second uh, round. Se- se- second se- round. Ninety seconds into the One second round. One minute twenty-seven. Yeah, that's it. After that, on that main card, Max Holloway, Ricardo Lamas. Oh, they had an entertaining fight back and forth, but the last 10, 15 seconds of that fight, when they just eyeballed each mm. other, planted that was their one feet of the and threw. That was of twenty sixteen. That's probably sure. my highlight of the year that got my adrenaline running. Max Holloway, po- to... Max Holloway points to the spot on the ground, like, "Come on, motherfucker!" That's and it. And then they just literally stand. Toe to toe and just swing at each other. No defending, no blocking, just straight punch for punch. He's the only it's player. Fucking on crazy, the... crazy 10 seconds to watch. Yeah. On the UFC game, he's the only player you can do that with in the That's last right. 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, you can call it out. Can, can, he, can, can he beat Aldo, you reckon? Is he, is he that yes. good? Yeah, Hell fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah he can. Yeah, he's can. just long enough, man. He's yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. He's big. He's got that... Because you know Jose's going to try and strike tear. with him. Been on an absolute tear. It's ten straight. Ten, ten straight. straight. Okay. There's no way you can argue the longer with that. You, the longer you've been winning, the closer you are to losing or whatever that, yeah. that ten straight, stat is. He's active. Jose has had one fight since 200 against mm. an opponent he's already fought before. Too mm. so I'd lean towards Max in that, and I'd pull for Max in that. Yeah. Just to get a, yeah. a new champion of that division, but... yeah. On that card, yeah, you, Faber and Cruz, Bisping, Rockhold into the KO. For, for me, that's my award for card of the year. When you, when yeah, you, when you one, pay for nine, fights, nine. that whole afternoon was just fucking straight lit. Yeah, and to cut back to uh, the weekend, fucking so long, Uriah Faber in 2016. It is, yeah. yeah. California wow. kid. Thanks for the memory, Uriah Faber. And memory. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> thanks, for so the, the thanks for the memories, memories Uriah Faber. <laughs> Who do you reckon you're Sweet more on nips, the subject fa- of, Sweet uh, nips, Fabes. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you Your reckon you might see, see hang him up in 2017? Who should we throw under the bus that needs to retire? <laughs> Big dog, uh, little Nog. Who would do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Little Nog, what are you doing, yeah. man? Please. Man, that, uh, he, he, could, he could be one. Yep. He could be one. Brad Pickett. Get. Brad Pickett, who Faber fought on the yeah. weekend. Brad Pickett. Yeah. Probably getting to that He's point. He's been around a long time. He has. Uh Rousey. Ronda Rousey, there you go. Beat, beat me to it. I think Ronda Rousey retires yeah. in 2000 and maybe 16 if she gets clipped. Bisping? Amanda Nunez coming up on this card. Bisping, you reckon he hangs around? Uh, Bisping could retire, yeah. Th- like two more fights? Like that's that, right. That's another... Like... Say, say he gets through his next <laughs> opponent and then something else happens. Maybe he might... Yeah, mm. I, I could see that happening. I'm it saying he uses, loses to Yol and then one last retirement fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be. It goes back to Manchester or something like that. He gets to go out on his shield at home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He could, he could be one. Bro, uh, he would just be so set up for with all, all the fights that he's put together and, and all the, the wins that he's had. Travis Brown. Hopefully he just sort of just goes off into the yeah, sunset. Yeah, yeah. Not a not a Travis Brown fan by any. He's stretch. got a fight line no. up. Doesn't he, he does. He yeah. does. Who's against Derek who's Lewis? Oh, Derek right. Lewis and him are talking yeah. the Black Bees. The Black yeah. Bees. Yeah. yeah. Big, big, that Instagram. Big couple of big motherfuckers mm. thrown down. That'll be all right. Big fan of that. Uh, Kane Velasquez. I'm going to throw that one. Yeah. At you. And v- Vadum rematch. Yep. I think. Uh, I, I think Kane retires as heavyweight champion in 2017. Really? Because all that fighters union chat came around Kane Velasquez, and he was a. Uh, like he's an unbelievable heavyweight. His resume speaks for himself, but like yeah. for the casual fans, just a Mexican American guy that's just a straight superstar in the cage, just walks through everyone. I think he gets his belt back and hangs him up. He's had seven surgeries in the yes. UFC already, and he has a fight book for two weeks' time. He's fighting Vadum in a rematch, the dude that took his belt from him, and he already has his eighth surgery lined up for after the fight. 
Really? He's going into the fight going, yeah, yeah, we're heading in for another back surgery uh, afterwards. Yeah. Um, At what point when you're 36, point? 37 do you go, oh, shit. Yeah, got absolutely. One, one more for the retirement, but possibly this year. Uh, on the prelim to 207, we've got Johnny Hendricks, Neil Magny. Oh, yeah. Bye, Hendricks. Post your starter. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Get back on that TRT at home, Hendrix. Go <laughs> okay. wrestle somewhere. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> oh. Oh, I've heard people are listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you yeah. respond to our request to come on the yeah. podcast, Johnny? <laughs> Seriously, man. If, if there was ever Sabotized a right there, dude, son. <laughs> if there was ever a uh, a dude on the source, it was when he went five rounds with GSP. You see that guy's physique yeah. from then to now. You're right. Uh, it's if, a if, stark comparison. If there, if there was yeah. ever one, he, he went five hard rounds, harder than anyone ever has with George over 25 minutes. And for mine, probably won that fight. I yeah. thought that was going to be I, in, I, in I, I that fight. That I, to him too, I, th- I thought Hendricks was going to win that fight, but he's gone on an absolute skid since and been straight, uh, straight awful. And I think Neil Magny might be a bit too long for him and potentially retire him in that fight. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a decent call, Dan. I wonder, wonder about like Vitor Belfort. If he if he'll hang it up in 2017, he's he's had a long and illustrious career. He started to get a little bit punchy in his last few fights. He had a know? run there for a while, and it looked like he might be in contention again. And then he got those two losses. Has it been now well, that, three? I think it was. It was like did no Luke Rockhold didn't get a shot at in him. Um, who who's who's beat Vitor Belfort in recent times? Uh, who hasn't? How long yeah, have you got? Dan, <laughs> yeah. Dan Henderson, Weidman. Uh, Musasi, yeah, that's right. Who's he fighting next? Ah, uh, K- Gaslam. Oh. Yeah, Gaslam. looking like Kelvin Gaslam in Brazil, who murked, murked, right yeah. middleweight, Tim at Kennedy. middleweight. Still can't believe that. That's it. Yeah, but Ke- Tim Kennedy was also coming off a real long layoff and and all that sort of stuff too. So mm. he he wouldn't have been at his best by any means. That was one of the surprise cards of the year for me. Like that one, no one expected it to be fireworks. It was between two massive cards, and they the fights delivered. Like, oh yeah, there's always just some barn burner that just comes on out of absolutely nowhere that makes it all worthwhile. Biggest uh, extracurricular incident, like something that didn't happen in a fight, but that happens outside. I mean, there's been a whole bunch of fucking controversies. You've got John Jones. Various scandals, <laughs> hit and run. Which one? Like, yeah, hit and run. And John Jones fight, fight week gets popped before the 200. before the big dance. That was the that's the biggest one for me. Granted, the car accident with the hit and run, yes, it's big, but in terms of effects on the sport, that was queued up, ready to go. The boys are cutting weight a couple of days out from the biggest show that they potentially ever done. What they wanted to be the biggest show, yeah. and he gets popped for a, a tainted dick pill. Wow. I reckon it also up there was that um, when Conor McGregor and the UFC had that little spat thing where Conor sort of posted that he was retired, retired you know, Twitter. like to, uh, everyone Got was just like, what that the was a fuck? fucking like, huge tweet. That he, was like, he could potentially tweet of be the done year. here, like, because he's got the money to be done if he doesn't like what the direction with this is going, because that was right around the whole GSP doing his thing, too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the fucking. UFC have had a few disagreements now with different people over the money. Oh, yeah. And and you can understand too. Like They're putting their body on the line over and over again. You only get to punch that clock so many times. Here's one for you. Uh, let's, let's go through and predict who will be weight class champions at this time next year. We Ooh. put this on record 12 months from now. Uh, who's the, is Demetrius Johnson still the 125 champ? I'm going to say yes, he is. Uh, yeah, Look, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. agree with that. Fuck 125 anyway. He, of, course gonna, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course he's probably going to be champion. Uh, Fuck hashtag. it. Yeah, make, maybe uh, make another Ultimate Fighter UFC and try and find some other fucking can for yeah. him to crush. Although, bro, he took it to him in that fight, though. He, he, he always he, tapped he, him. Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah, out to Tim yeah. Elliott. Merry Christmas, Awkward Tim Elliott. Yeah. We did say yeah. we were going to throw some yeah. people yeah. under the That's bus. Merry, Merry <laughs> Christmas, Tim Elliott. We're throwing man. whole groups of people. Yeah. If you're in the 125 division and you're, yeah. not, and you're not That's DJ. It. That's it. Well, we we see him fight some. Joey Benavidez again for a third time. Like, that's, that's what I mean is like when they talk up that sort of that Demetrius Johnson, Dom Cruz fight, 
you, you look at that sort of style of fighter that it was nearly able to catch DJ and you just think he'd never get that on Cruz. Current champion in 135 is Dominic Cruz. Uh, is he still the champion at Christmas next year? Mate, he, bearing uh, in mind he has a fight coming up in two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if he wins that, he will rematch probably TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd probably tend to TJ think... TJ Dillashaw's that, on that card too. Yeah, I probably Who tend to think TJ might take yeah. that back. Who, who, who are some... I reckon you'll, you'll definitely see more people coming down. Uh, 145, Max Holloway be champ at the year's end next year. Mm. DJ Gillishaw is fighting John Lineker. Oh, heavy hands there, both guys. Yeah. Lineker can crack. That's the first fight on the main. Lineker might not make weight again. Yeah, yeah He's exactly. all over yeah. the shop with making weight, that guy. He doesn't, does, he's the Kelvin Gastelum of the lighter weight guys. Yeah. TJ Dillashaw is a monster though mm. that weight division. I he think is. TJ's feet might be uh, too much for him. Yeah. Just outwork him. Yeah. Uh, Don Cruz, yay or nay, Danny? I think so. Yeah. I think he might be able to sit on the belt for long enough. Take take yeah, maybe one, maybe two fights, and then look to maybe be on his path to retirement. Yeah. Who who could know? That's true. He's already got an analytical gig with Fox lined exactly. up afterwards. So he's, he's not, got the he's, TV gig. Yeah, he seems intelligent enough not to stick around longer than he should, you know, past yep. his prime where it's going to do him damage and all that sort of stuff. Max, who's, who's not to say it hasn't already caused damage, but he but, he's definitely going to transition into that media media gig, no worries. Mm. Max Holloway, 145 champ at uh, Christmas 2017. If Connor vacates... Oh, yeah, he, he essentially he's, stripped, he's already been stripped, stripped, yeah. I mean, if he, if he doesn't challenge... Mm. That's it. Justin Hammond fights at that way. Yeah, he's coming to get him, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 I'm El gonna back Fuego. my boy El Fuego and just start tapping some motherfuckers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> start working from the guard, son. The, the crazy yeah. thing is, it, you could probably get to that. I mean, it, it, some people would have. Like John Jones got there in, in, in I think mm. two years of professional mixed martial arts training. You know that that is some scary, yeah. scary shit to progress that fast. Mm. Let's well, so Justin versus Doohu Choi in. Uh, UFC 215 maybe yeah, like Christmas yeah, next year yeah, just Cub, Cub and Berg just yeah. fucking throwing <laughs> heat but like, like man he got good quick yeah. <laughs> call out Jake Matthews I reckon oh you, mate you'd, you'd yeah know, man you'd, you'd know when your boy had definitely got some skills when he was on a UFC mm. card you well know? that's it like you look at a bloke like Jake Matthews a dude who's kicking a lot of goals in the UFC as, as a young bloke who's one of the hands down one of the toughest pricks in Australia Mm. Young and, and fucking and an athlete too like Gone in and a, been a fucking beat up the last two times too You know what mm. I mean So it's like he's exactly. literally You'd see him in the street and he'd be like Oh that's a Jake Matthews man Don't don't fuck with that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dudes in the UFC coming in like eh, Take down fucking beat down on him yeah. Like, yeah. Oh shit son, It would be such a frightening. It would actually be such a small percentage of the total population Oh exactly People that are actually trained in hand hand combat One percenters man One percent yeah, One percent I reckon that, that, that'd be it Like if, if you were walking down the street and you were Jake Matthews Anybody that was within your weight range, you would just be like, I could fucking smash that. that yeah. cunt, well, not that even cunt necessarily cunt. weight range. It would be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll fucking... Oh, that, that cunt, that cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will bash that, that cunt's head in. <laughs> like, yeah. That's two for Chris tonight. Uh, <laughs> He's back, people. He's back. Yeah. No, but you, you, you would have <laughs> that confidence vengeance. over mm. pretty much anybody. Oh, definitely. And that's not... <laughs> yeah. Maybe not even on the Jake Matthews level. If you've had just been a local having a bunch of kickboxing Fights like man, yeah. I've been in more fights than any. The like ninety five percent of these fuckers. That's like. the problem is that there's people that walk around with that attitude mm. out there that you know that do what just want to kick people's heads in and, and have a few rum- rumbos and decide that it's one, a good idea. Uh, one fifty five is a straight up Shark Tank. Uh, mm. Is McGregor has the belt at the moment? Does he have it at Christmas? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's some motherfuckers waiting Depends for him. If he wants it, mm. yeah, exactly. Uh, it's true. One, Depends. One word, son. Khabib. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it's, that's hard to ar- that's hard to argue with. And and, and Khabib's I, coming, it's just a matter of when. That's yeah. it. He, he he's, had to he's, win. he's coming for it. He's yeah. he, he's gonna be wearing that belt. Yep. He's gonna have to fight Tony in Ferguson for it though. It is. And, 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 it's probably and, gonna go to an interim belt, I'd say. They yeah, might do it the interim definitely. just to give it a bit of prestige. So when they do mark it the McGregor come back, it's like, oh he has his interim belt, he's gonna yeah. come and unify it, so to speak. But uh Khabib, MJ lit him up though, I reckon. He, he, he did Three minutes I know One of those left hands can we're, we're only saying uh, Only talking yesterday About how much uh, Michael Johnson did Hit Khabib In there When they fought But 
Con- Connor might be looking at that going, oh, man, I will fucking tool, oh, tool this exactly. motherfucker. Exactly, yeah, definitely. But the second he gets it to the floor, uh, nah, nah. I've seen enough now to know that Connor's not getting up. No, exactly, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. He has to somehow survive 25 minutes. Yeah. But Khabib has to try and survive 25 minutes as well. Because everybody seems to have tried to prepare for that Khabib Nurmagomedov style and everybody would have, but no one can fucking stop it. Like Rafael de Sonos and, you know, like, and all those dudes that he just manhandles with that style of his, you know, no one's, especially not Connor, is going to be able to stay on his feet for that. Rafael? Rafael. <laughs> Rafiki. You wow. know who could be a dark horse in the uh, middleweight division? Gegard Musasi. Yep. Robert Whitaker. Yeah, shout out Robbie, man. He's on a fucking Aussie. tear. Represent. Rich Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Lee man uh, Coming for one final pick, run pick, On the sauce like. Pick a crazy A crazy smoky That you think Will have the belt In 2017 Dylan Dennis 170 Who? Oh, <laughs> Dylan uh, Dennis The McGregor's uh, Jiu Jitsu uh, coach <laughs> oh, a, a smoky for a belt? Oh jeez G- Yeah g- Give us a second I'll, I'll come up with something <laughs> Oddball That I think That is actually realistic too I'm not going to just Troll you with something That's yeah. Yeah. Just being rebounded. I think we see John Jones Back in the hot seat At um, 205 In the light heavyweight yeah, Division in 2017 be, yeah. For sure Has to be Yeah He's talking about Now that he's had A uh, grappling match He put up a tweet up uh, John Jones fought Dan Henderson In a grappling match Only a couple of weeks ago For you casual fans And John Jones Went to an Olympic Games For wrestling And Jones comes out And fucking just Grabs hold of his arm And makes him quit Mm. So Jones is uh, is big into everything now, and he's t- he put up a tweet yesterday saying, "Now that I'm starting grappling, all these black belts coming out and fucking talking shit. Uh, who, who wants to tap next?" And I still maintain I would not bet against John Jones in anything related to combat. No, way. he's just a winner, man. He's Com- a winner. Yeah, Competition. Yeah, he, yeah that, you're dead right, man. He's one of those guys that goes in and wins and believes in himself. If that you he's going to win if every you were, time. If you were like just hanging out with him on the beach, skimming stones or something, it'd be like he wouldn't go home until he, he had had more skims than you. That's it. Yeah, I'll make you have that sort that, of Lance yeah. Lance Armstrong mentality. That Michael yeah. Jordan, man. Mm. You could beat Michael Jordan in a game of cards. All of those guys would have it days. in common. Yeah. 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 Take his money on the plane. Like uh, get a get a better hand than him. He'd be fucking seething. Yeah, that competitive, and that's how you get that good, though. Yeah, that's true. That's you, you, yeah. you would have to be obsessive yeah. with it. Yeah, and that's like balance with everything, you know. Somebody who seems like they've got everything made might not be the happiest person because they're they they have to be this certain way mentally in order to achieve that that level of whatever they are. So my, it might not be that pleasant to be a Michael Jordan. I've you know, discovered that Smokey, Christmas two thousand and seventeen, willing to go on record here. UFC heavyweight champion at the New Year's card next year will be Francis Ngannou, oh. the Frenchman, the big Frenchman, it's like the Czech Congo, two, yeah, Czech Congo oh. two point oh. Yeah. He's on six and oh, and he's uh, ready to fucking go nice. wreck shop at heavyweight man. Nice. Six fights, six wins for him. Got to hold a uh, traditionally known as a stand up guy, just big power. Putting people away, just yeah. grabbed a hold of a Kimura on the weekend and just made this dude quit. Anthony yeah. Hamilton at, at that card of the weekend just grabbed a hold of it, and uh, even the commentators are like, "This guy hasn't been doing that this long at all." Like really? he just breezed through this guy's guard, just grabbed a hold of the arm, tapped him. Nice. So I, I think he's a big smoky to watch. Man, on 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 along that same note, I, I would say that Massad Bektik would be up there as well. That he could definitely get three more fights and three more wins under his belt in 2017. You could definitely see him contend for a belt at 145 too. What about UFC 205? Uh, Aldo Aldo McGregor? No, sorry, Alvarez McGregor. Yeah, that was that was up there. I don't. Yeah. I, I still think the McGregor Diaz fight was bigger for me. Yeah. In hindsight, maybe I don't. I don't know whether that's the case. One or two, which was your one. favorite? Yeah. One has Definitely to be one. Preferred First one being a Diaz up. fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the way he dismantled Alvarez, man, was just—it's like he put everything together. Yeah, and it just was a show. It would just give you a hard on. That's what sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he took down Alvarez, man. Is. He gave me a hard on. Yeah, you watch, you man. watch that right hand, yep. and Alvarez just how turns into a, like a scared dog. Always Have you seen control. that? Always that blew control. my mind. I, I wasn't a big like McGregor fan either, mm. but seeing that, He's oh, legit, man. I definitely thought that Alvarez 
like I wasn't sure that Connor had him, you know? Like I thought, fuck, this Alvarez could have the fucking recipe to defeat him. And uh, he just fucking ran a clinic. Mm. He looks so good. He just, just murdered him. Yeah. Murked him like he like he did so many people already. He's just yeah. got those fucking breakfast, man. And he, he's, he's g- H- him him versus Aldo. Was that? Did we already discuss? Was that 2015 or 16? I think that was 15. I remember, wasn't Fuck. it? Yeah. Fuck, that was a big moment. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna go pat the turtle, Bruce? <laughs> you know who for 205? I think is gonna start making some noise. Is that that guy who fought on the UFC Fight Night Sacramento from Scotland? It's like Craig something. Yeah. Yeah, man, that guy was looking pretty. He beat Pal. The Pal- middle, Pal- the middleweight bloke. He's the guy who stopped right. Pal- Harris's takedowns. Is he really? Locks. He knocked him out apparently. And Shit. Wh- and then he's come over, got some UFC, and he he fought on the main card. He was like the first fight UFC Sacramento. Jeez. He, um, he 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 beat Cole Miller, I think it was, wasn't it? Like a UFC veteran. Uh, Oh no! It was someone else. He beat it. Well, some Japanese, we got some, some uh, Japanese off, dude. Off, off mic chat going on here. It probably sounds like absolute yeah, shit. Yeah, some Japanese dude. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Harris wasn't here. Piece of shit too, though. Like, just let go, bro. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I mean, you don't know, like, without being like, oh, bro. The, you yeah, do I mean, after that many instances. Turn the kills of yeah, but I'm yeah, talking. I'm talking yeah. about you know armchair opinions, backyard philosophy. Oh, sure. We could we could never understand what it's actually like to fucking Grubbing to fellas. you know trying to be fucking putting putting a choke on and shit like that. But from from all that you can gather, it sounds like everybody else manages not to hold on for too long. And Paul Harris is like a mul- multiple time people. offender. That's a, that's a scary thing, you know. If you're if you're a newbie or an unknown, and you're going to do jujitsu classes for the first time or something mm. like that, and there'd and be you, plenty of them out there. You you run into the, somebody who's just got such a big ego or something like that, or like, you know, fucking isn't on the level and shit, mm. and just uh, decides to do something silly in the gym, like you're talking yeah. about with John Jones and shit like that, like. Oh yeah, fuck! I don't know, man. And there'd be heaps of people that just don't like the cut of your jib, and and therefore, you know, like they're smaller than you, so you know, like they want to sort of try and exert their dominance because they've been there longer and get overzealous and start, yeah, you know, you trying to like, go for something. You're like, hang on a minute, you know, like what the? F-? Apparently, like jujitsu people, you know, if you're a if you're a brown or a black or something like that, it's like you don't really look forward to sparring with a um, or rolling with a with a blue belt like because a blue mm. belt will be much more I don't know like aggressive with the way yeah. that they're doing things and going for more and really more really frantic, trying like yeah, yeah really yeah, trying yeah. exactly yeah. whereas somebody who's more you know high level is just going to flow with it more and maybe yeah. be yeah, more relax. defensive well, and elusive and it, yeah. the, well yeah. that, that's like any sort of like training in any sort of combat sport where if you train with someone who's at a really high level they can Pull the, they're almost the so- safest people to to do that sort of method of training with, like because I can always remember absolutely like, sparring. Yeah, yeah. So much control when they're oh, they got so it, much so control, so they yeah. can just like fifteen percent things, and mm. you know, yeah. just and really feel what level about you're at, yeah. Yeah. just try to learn mm. from and feel where you're from. Yeah, like exactly. I'm feel I want to be feeling his hands, boy. Yeah, yeah, you feel me <laughs> light you up, boy. <laughs> just start da- dancing and po- like just yeah. not. So what's um? Out. You did a bit of. Martial arts was it mixed martial arts that you trained or Muay Thai? No, kickboxing? Muay Thai. Yeah, how Muay Thai. was that? How was yeah, it was that? good. It was good. How many uh, how many weeks or months or? I did it for about three months. So. Three months. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, did twice a week. Just partnered up with a bloke. And I was working with a lot of kicking and punching kicking, technique. Kicking and punching, like common combinations between uh, punching and kicking. Nice. Um, yeah, sparring. Yeah. So drills and sparring. Yeah, sparring on like one day a week. But um, only three months of it. So did you like, ever? Did you ever? Was any, any, um, uh, yeah. Sorry. So nothing, uh, nothing. Did you ever get any in any sort of like over emotional scuffles or anything like that? No, where you felt no, somebody mate, was being three, strange. Yeah, I think like you would certainly a separation when you first went in, and I went in with someone else who who did Muay Thai in Thailand, and um, yeah, he was like, "Let's go hard." So we went hard for like three months, but. I could probably throw a low leg kick because my hip flexors aren't real good, um, and then and then that would be it. I could punch a bag, but they're still and that's. I can that throw someone so much off guard if you were able to just like crack them first. That's with the only a thing, really like, decent leg yeah. kick. Even three months of then it you'd was just nothing. Be like hands down. Have you seen that? Yeah. Um, there's a video of a street fight, like a world star type video, where some massive dude is calling this guy out on the street, and he's way smaller than him and he just chops him down with leg kicks like this guy comes oh, yeah, in I like he's going to swing a big overhand right and this guy just but starts he like heaps of them. 
Yeah. If, if someone threw a leg kick at me, like, it would drop me like no oh, problem. Shit it'd drop any, like, anything. It'd right? take all yeah. the pop out of your, no, all, it, all the pop it, out of your punch. Even like, away. even holding the bag, like, you know, like, cause we, that's what we're doing, just holding bags for three, like, even holding a bag, you'd find that you'd get a bruise. You'd find you'd get a big bruise on the inside of your leg and shit like that. Yeah. Because um, I know the blood going there and stuff it was years ago, so I'm not, not too yeah. familiar. But, yeah, it was um, – yeah. I, I did like uh, I think maybe two weeks or maybe it was a month. I don't know. It could have been less. But of uh, kickboxing when we were kids. Yeah, Cri- I remember Chris and that. I, Chris and I, I both did that. it. And I think I remember quitting because um, I found like uh, the instructors would always – like obviously they they're trying to breed out like the pussies I guess so yeah, they, they fucking yeah. oh. they bred me out I guess but if mm. if that's the approach but I also felt like it was a fucking probably some dude younger than how old I am now yeah, exactly. thinking this is a way to train kids and just yeah. giving you leg kicks while you're standing there basically walking around to a whole crew and then subsequently let Chris and I at Chris's suggestion who's like you know fucking ten at the time or something I guess um, let us go. Sparring on the, in the uh, in the in the back of the PCYC after class one time, <laughs> and I think Chris knocked me out, like gave me a mild concussion. <laughs> Fuck! Them first and hands, dog. Yeah, first and last time. Fourth of son. July, baby. <laughs> man, we had a story of a buddy that enrolled in martial arts training as well as an adult. Went down to a local boxing gym <laughs> and uh, yeah. walked in and uh, said, "You know, I, I'm here to sign up, here to try and uh, what, learn a bit of the art of boxing and." You know, maybe have a fight one day, but just here to sort of to try and learn as much as I can. The trainers got triggered basically by the, he captured the one sentence there, going, "Oh, maybe have a fight one day." So instantly, that's code to him that, "All right, well, let's see what this guy's made of. He, <laughs> he wants to have a fight. We'll we'll go." You want to box? Yeah, let's get, get, I'll show you what boxing is. Get, gets him in the ring, he, puts a headgear on him, mouth like. Probably would have had a mouth guard as well too. Yeah, I'm absolutely. assuming. Yeah, absolutely. Like he did. Headgear, headgear, mouth guard. This guy comes in to train with him with nothing on, and just proceeds to. Like, All right, well, let's move around a bit. This fella lights him up. There's a Christmas special. This guy lights him up like a fucking Christmas tree. Yeah, like, yeah. Over time, just chip, chips away at him to the point where this buddy of ours, stop, 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 stop. Uh, How is this helping? <laughs> How is this even helping? Like, just. <laughs> Basically breaking him in, beating the shit out of him. Yeah. When he doesn't know technique just or anything, he's just learned how, how to go. Had right. pretty much stopped defending himself. Had just like turtled up and was like sort of, you know, shielding shots with this like Pan Pacific champion just... Ha, 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 bang, 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 bang. In a way lighter yeah. weight class than him. So he's just moving like lightning. Just ripping okay, him with like body shots and like... Uppercuts and all this sort of stuff, just oh man, that'd be so because so you, you boxed at that gym for a little while yeah. as well, and he was so. lazy. That dude was just lazy, yeah. so phoning he, it in. So, so he was typ- typical of that sort of stuff. He'd have like me and my other mate who is, is kind of overweight, but he still like, weighs over 100 kilos, so there'd be a, a good 40 kilo differential between us, and he'd just sort of like. Paid PT sessions were just like, okay, you two just spar each other. And he'd just like <laughs> sort of stand there and watch and provide no technical advice or support whatsoever. Like between rounds, you'd just be like, oh, yeah, I was just stuck here. I couldn't do anything. He's like, yeah, 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 you were. Like just not, I'll be, I'll be oh, on no, no technical advice. Cornering yourself. <laughs> A question I was going to ask you before, Morley. In the um, army, do you have to do any form of like grappling or – like combat, hand-to-hand combat as part of that training? Not for me. I didn't do any. Because uh, you were a medic? No, I was uh, a armoured. So I was uh, a uh, like an armoured vehicle driver. Oh, like, no shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. But like you get into, I think um, now you can go on close quarter combat so CQB or something that you can go on courses right. where you go and roll or grapple for and just like really – Weapon Close. defensive, yeah, 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 all that, yeah. All that sort, sort of stuff. stuff. I imagine too, for yeah. about for a few months, and you, and you get ticked off. But mainly, it's uh, a lot of the like uh, special forces, so SAS and uh, the the does down in Sydney. So they would do it uh, a lot reg- more regularly mm. than just your average Joe. I mean, I never did it. I mean, I've seen a lot of boys out in towns will do it. Yeah. <laughs> out at Mad Cows just punching on, but... <laughs> <laughs> out at Mad Cows. Ma- at at, at the, Mad Cow. The Mad Cow. Yeah. At the Mad Cow, main, punching on. Main pub in Townsville on the strip. 
Shout out, Mad Cow. Yeah, Mad Cow. Yeah. Mad Cow. Hey guys, yeah, a couple of, couple of rum and cokes, guys. Yeah, here, rum and coke. Guess how much it is for a Bundy and Coke? They're, they're charging all the diggers. They know all the diggers are back with cash and they're coming to drink. Guess how much a rum and coke is? Like a single nip. 250 dollars Oh, mate, I paid $11.50 for a, um, uh, a pint of beer at Oof. the airport the other day. Wow. Yeah. It's One place brutal. you don't drink for free, man. Eleven oh, fifty. What God, airport? Man. At Melbourne Airport, right. under the bus. Yeah. No, oh. eleven fifty. Well, I went to uh, what seven years ago now, man. I went to uh, went to WA <clears throat> for my twenty first, and uh, back then you were paying nine fifty for a pint. Yeah, true. There. So it'd be eleven bucks now. Yeah, right. exactly. I was I was astounded, man. Just round of four beers, please. Oh, you, your mate. Yeah, his mate and his mate. Round of four beers, hand of fifty back at six dollars. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't <laughs> Shit son You wouldn't want to put, be yeah. a big drinker <laughs> To put in perspective The beers that I've got here I'm, Shout out to the John Boston I'm drinking the uh, Summer Ale all the time BWS at the moment Shout out to two of them uh, them welcome to get on board for sponsorship anytime you like. <laughs> we'll, plug we'll plug anything you have for like not that much. We'll like, do yeah. anything. <laughs> this shit, yeah. Anything. anything. Yeah. We'll have these are in a ten pack freezer made of uh, ten aluminum cans. <laughs> they have uh, it was twenty five bucks. Really? One point two standard to drink. Two dollars fifty. There you go. Standard Free to drink. Advertisement. Yeah, How do you yeah, like it? I yeah. love that. BWS, you know, please. That's, that's a people yeah. model. You know, you you provide something to the people that's that it, they appreciate. We've just given that reach. That's essentially that is free advertising. Free advertising. Done it is. Then. It is. Even if like three people listen to this. Mm. Well, I don't think any alcoholic sort of bottle needs too much like yeah. advertisement. Everyone wants to get fucked up, bro. The knockoff would blow them the fuck up. <laughs> it's probably like a huge portion of... Oh, yeah. You Danny, hear me, 92? When, when Danny just said before, he's like, you know, even if three people listen to that, he's talking in million. 94 <laughs> followers stand up. <laughs> and shout out numbers don't lie, man. Those SoundCloud. Six zeros. <laughs> Times six. <laughs> uh, episode 12 is on my uh, iTunes and like... Whenever I'm working out or walking around or whatever, listening to my my headphones, episode twelve always just starts up with Moily like, come on, 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 come Threw down uh, during the year as well. A bunch of talking oh, about people's yeah, uh, yep. introductory sesquipades and uh, that all, was all early days. Yeah, well, that episode, was episode four. four. Yeah. four. Episode four. I, four. We got a lot of love for episode yeah. four. Shout out. My yeah. favorite story was your one about the photos, and I think it was the first episode. <laughs> yeah. Chris, yeah. Yeah. That, that was that was what, strong. What, what month did we start? I don't know, but we'll that, that was that was DIY that. to a motherfucker. That was yeah. when we didn't have that, mic stands. That was the one I was on, actually, and that was the first time I've ever yeah. heard it. Was yeah, we can tell, yeah. man. What, we what, had what month was that? <laughs> yeah, let, let me bring out that timeline. See, we've done the... Uh, the recording and... sounded like shit because we had two microphones between four strapped with gaff tape to, like, boxes That's and shit. That's like right, that. yeah. It sounded like episode uh, 15 and 16. <laughs> <laughs> The Columbia episode. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out Phil. We propped him as being the mad tech guy and it fucking just... Yeah, that fight, big time. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. didn't know what he well, was One doing. in all in no He, deli- he nah. delivers tech, but his o- yeah. audio, when, yeah. audio uh, visual. His when we listened to it, though, like Kyle Steven was here at the time, it sounded uh, like it was the fucking Ducks Nuts, eh? On the, yeah. Through the lappy. Mate, like, it did. It sounded great and Filthy Rich did really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gets my Mate, shout epi- out. Episode one, we came up onto the iTunes... Was the first episode we did a bunch of the underground episodes too as well, which fun, which funnily enough now would be interesting to go and listen back to. Right? Mm. Like, oh shit! Yeah. But episode one Might was ju- punished with that recording son. Th- Thirty <laughs> here, we, we would notice it now. It was the thirtieth of July UFC two hundred one prediction and the most awkward Tinder date. We're transitioning here from the UFC year in review to the knockoff year in review. We said we were coming at you with paying homage. Now we're throwing it back. Yeah, it's just, yeah. nice, nice. Oh, that's awesome. to get a buzz on. Yeah, absolutely. So what what, what month was that did you say again? Uh, 30th of July. So we've been, ba- been with you five yeah. months here yeah, at, nice. for the end of the year. Very five good. five months. Uh, what is this? 
18, we've shelved the idea of episodes after what we were saying last time. We've shelved the idea of episodes. But oh, I think episode... There's 18 in the books, right? Yeah, yeah, there's in 18 five... in the books. 18 just happens to be the Christmas special, fam. That's so it, man. In, in, there is no episode 18. In five months. What, uh, do you have got any ambitions for 2017 with the potty? Like, if you could get a guest next year, Chris, that, oh, that is attainable. Reckon, that reckon, is attainable. I think we should go down that road of maybe... Hiring a hooker and getting her to go downtown and give guys hand jobs on <laughs> audio, man. One hundred percent. Hand out from our married free, dog. Free, there, right? free, ha- free hand jobs out of a van just to like CBD workers and stuff. Yeah. You reckon guys would take it up? Bang, I bang bust it a bit. Like. Start up like one of those like cheaters or private investigation mm. schemes, and then just like sell the. Video what do you reckon? What do you reckon the hit the rate would be thing. if you set that up and you? And you put a chick down like a a main busy sort of street in the middle of Brisbane CBD, and got her to hand out free hand jobs. How many? How many you'd get? Like out of asking 40, 40 blokes. Have you ever been uh, like offered a, a, a hand job? Fucking just walking down the street. Queen, Queen Street would be too obvious. You'd think you'd be set up. Yeah. What about like down like Mary Street? <laughs> Out of four, out of <laughs> is that uh, where like Mary's? Of streets, I don't like know. One of the adjacent streets yeah. for anyone who no, doesn't yeah. know. I think but you, it's not as no, this no, just no, next no. door. Country more than yeah. no. If if you if you're talking strike rates, you're talking like suburban parks where there's just a random there. There's somewhere like not too around. far from the Brisbane Botanical yeah. Garden. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. If you go say if you, if you were in uh, if you were in like a park over in like Tingalpa. To <laughs> go for your, your oh, run yeah, rate want, would be yeah, much want, so, better. Yeah, that's what I mean, man. If you're going out to the burbs, you're, you're sussing out someone. In Queen Street, you think you're being set up in like a hidden camera or a Snapchat or something. <laughs> you're right. Wait, you're wait, right. Wait, want me to jerk your dick off? Like, yeah. Uh, what, you, what, what, this is what, coming what, from yeah, a north okay. side what, what, too, what, what's, man. What's the, what's the go? Where, yeah. Whereabouts? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. But this nah, is that north you're side love, bro. A little park somewhere, you'd be like, oh, where are we heading? Like, bro, I can remember one time I actually like knocked one back. I was fishing underneath this bridge, like at all. <laughs> all, at all of... I love the start of this. <laughs> <laughs> knocked one back. Fishing this could under... mean a number of things. Fishing yeah. under this bridge in Isle, Isle of Capri, like down the Gold Coast, like um, and the, pretty much the spot, like you've just got to be right underneath the bridge, fishing between that and the pylons, because there's like really deep water and cod there. And like um, this bird like comes down the the footpath behind me, just real, real drunk. Like and can hear it coming from a mile away, and like I'm just like, oh, maybe if I just like be real quiet, like and still, which I was anyway. Like she won't notice me, and she'll just keep what walking past. Like so, I can hear her sort of like walk up behind me, like and and she stops. I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck, has she noticed me, sort of thing. And she's like. Excuse me, little bridge man. <laughs> like, um, and I'm just like, fuck. Like, I'll just ignore her. See if, like, see, see if she keeps walking. And then she's just like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, and just like, and I was just like, little oh, bridge yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, like, hey, hey, the you Christmas going? special with little bridge man. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. That name's gonna stick hard, <laughs> man. <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, hey, going? And then like, just cut a long story short, she is just absolutely maggot blind. Like um gets to the stage where she's like offering to suck my dick like and and I'm just under a bridge could have easily just had my dick sucked fucking car was twenty feet away like was just sitting there just like didn't want to was just sort of making every excuse in the book why like why she couldn't sort of thing and um, wait what did she want regrets. in return nothing, or nothing man nothing like just so it was just she was just being just, drunk and just, just gibberish being drunk and then got and onto to the suck subject my dick. that was it what it? age Ooh. oh. Man, I don't know because it was like real dark, real dark. Like in this spot, like particularly dark. And um, that's like where you always go. Age, so you went man. back. The little, between, the little bridge yeah. man hanging but out between in an especially 20, dark spot. Between 20 and 30, I think. Between Claiming he didn't take the blowjob. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you still think of her, bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I s- still fucking tears me up to this day. One day, away. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Still think about it every time I yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, I ended up oh, I know this is the wrong thing to do But she ended up like Passing out On, on, on the edge oh. of this This like oh, oh, Allegedly God. Allegedly <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Like, like, Everywhere I'm scared as <laughs> fuck She, she, she uh, ends up Got dark in here He's <laughs> going on the internet son <laughs> The TKO lawyer just rang <laughs> Like he said to stop man <laughs> Have we got any lawyer mates? Yeah, let me <laughs> let me just call my lawyer real quick before I tell this story. No, yeah. we might need to lawyer up after she, this Christmas yeah. special. <laughs> she, she ends up passing out on the on the footpath, which is right next to the water, 
just drunk, completely comatose out of it. And at, at that stage, like my car's like 20, 20 feet away. And then like I'm like, oh, I'm just going to, um, you know, to put my fishing gear in the car. And she's like, you're coming back though, aren't you? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to put my shit in the car. Put the shit in the car. And I was just like, vroom, yeah. vroom, like, see ya. Yeah. I mean, that's arguable. Is that your fight to no, fight? No, shit. You no, know, that's, that's a conscious decision that somebody's made to become that intoxicated. Does that then become somebody else's responsibility when they go too far? There's definitely a certain level that I agree with, but... Yeah, it's a tricky one, man. He was volunteering, man. And sometimes, look, you're seeing people just with like sexual urges and things like that. If you're talking about the things like that where it seems uncontrollable, the video on Instagram today of the Saint, Saint, uh, <laughs> oh, San Diego, San Diego Chargers. SD, baby. There, there was a security guard <laughs> at, a, at a Chargers game on the field in front of probably 65,000 people. <laughs> we're in a, it's California, but he's wearing a pair of track pants over there. The cheerleaders are dancing in front of him. And put simply, he's... Either through his pocket or maybe he's even cut a hole in the pocket of his track pants. <laughs> he's doing like a reverse grip masturbation as he's <laughs> in, in front of, in, in like publicly watching the cheerleaders. So he's and like, he's maybe all of five feet away from the cheerleaders. Yeah, and yeah. his job is to <laughs> have his back turned to the ball game, his face turned to the crowd and just be watching the crowd for any incidents that yeah, go on. Yeah, people jumping fences. So he's, he's somehow felt anonymous in front of an entire audience of people with, Camera phones, presumably, and is like going to the point of ejaculation <laughs> properly. It's not like he's he's having a fondle. Oh, oh, oh. He's um Do he's he's he's, he's he's trying to hide it by sort of the sort of military stance of hold your hands together in front of you, but one of those hands <laughs> is just furiously <laughs> like knuckles up, just. <laughs> <laughs> just, just jacking, jacking himself. All his other Do you reckon there. he's done it before? Because let's like, there's people watching the game. The it's game. Intense. The people game. are watching. He's just like down there, just like hand in his pocket. And if you haven't seen it, it looks like he's holding his one hand and the other one, like he's doing the security. Yeah, like he might be a repeat pose. But how's yeah, that holding that first blood time, down? Like to have, he's not his first time doing that. He's got that's got balls to sit up there and jerk off. <laughs> but he did not. Jesus <laughs> Christ! He's dead. Like said hold, an urge or something. He's holding something weird. That's right. exactly what I'm saying, man. That yeah. where you just lose control of your uncontrollable like, of, yeah, urge, which I've never, like, never sort of not to that extent. Experienced to jack off <laughs> in public or extent. anything like. I mean, that. All, all the guys out there could agree that there is a uh, there is some truth to the to the concept of. Thinking through your dick, there's there's a point where hormonal charge for a male can sometimes override, you know, a, a, a regular decision that, you know, especially in the intoxication, like yeah. that young lass was that wanted to uh, mm. get on that piece. But there would d- definitely be a, a a point that you could get to where no level of intoxication is going to pretty much alter of course, your of course, your yeah. call on it, you know. But yeah, it's all that medium ground that's the the, the, the the lines get blurred. Yeah, like you've been friends with somebody for a really long time. You don't want to spoil yeah. the friendship, but all of a sudden yeah. you've had a few drinks. Yeah. You've had, there must Ladies, be a, if he's nice trying to be night. friends with you, he there wants to be. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so when's that court date, Chris? <laughs> and there must be something about you with uh, people just wanting to fellace you in public. Like it would th- throw back to uh, Parisian. Like, Oh. Man, that was, yeah. that was uh, Chris was caught up in an encounter uh, checking, yeah. checking we might the have told that We might have told that story on this podcast I feel Maybe. like we've told it, it on an underground, underground. Yeah. An underground So yeah. good luck finding that fam If you're a fan of vinyl And you're in an obscure record store <laughs> in, in Berlin At some point You might find those underground episodes But yeah. Yeah. Long there's story a story short Had a naked gay guy <laughs> uh, One morning when me and Reese were at the, the beach <laughs> Checking the surf Come up and flash him, flash his fucking gear at us, like from from at the other end of the the beach walkway, like asking us if we wanted to suck his dick, and we were just like, nah, man. Like, All good, thanks. <laughs> no, we're good. Oh, no, yeah. You thought about it, it man. We're good, man. Like, I love it. I like Danny I like the extended up. version of it where uh, it, Chris Chris and Reese actually went down. To check the surf of a morning time So it's pretty early And there's nobody around yeah. And so at the end of the beach path As blokes do They've both just taken a piss Because they need to take a piss in the morning So sort of either side of the the entrance to the, to the beach Basically they're taking a piss This guy comes sort of like Striding down the walkway in a towel And uh, from all reports had a, had a good sort of like head movement look At, at both guys' junk mm. As he was sort of walking past um, genitals for for those playing at home, 
and then uh, dropped the towel and was just wearing a small little G-string and started sort of kicking around in the shallows. So uh, Chris and Reese have decided, yeah, so that's no good. Let's go back to bed. And uh, this guy's obviously gapped a huge amount of space between the beach and the path to catch up to him and then called out from the other end of the path like, hey, boys, <laughs> want to suck it? <laughs> Gra- grabbing himself. And uh, that wasn't the only incident there. Like I remember Reese and I would have been fucking 15, 16 or something it's like a that. gay resort there. Yeah, yeah. You can S- probably S- figure South out where we're talking where's about. Where's this? Here in the, the sunny coast. Really? Uh, probably can't name the... Oh, yeah. can we? I guess we're wild. I mean, yeah, we you, you could figure oh, it out. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a couple of places on uh, North, the Sunshine and the Sunshine Coast, Sunshine yeah. and oh, Gold yeah. Coast. Yeah, you know what we're talking about. People call them like oh, about uh, fucking. <laughs> five k's north, and it uh, latitude four five two. Near Ulm. Yeah. So. You can figure it out yourselves. Oh. <laughs> but it, it's not alone. There's, uh, I've, I've had like run-ins in Southport in on the Gold Coast go, going for a yeah, surf as well. Yeah, I know that stretch of there's, beach. There's too. something about homosexuality where that you know they like to meet up in public for mm. for random sex. I remember when I was a young kid, there was uh, it comes back to that male thing. We the, were talking the, the the like mayor or whatever of my local council. Um, came up with a thing to take the doors off this one caravan park because it was known as a hotspot for um, blokes meeting up and having having random public sex. Like glory holes and shit. <laughs> no, nah, no, the do- door's off. Like, you took it off. So that altogether. you couldn't go behind a cubicle sto- stall yeah. at all. You bet the... they still did it at night time, though, yeah. man. As you say. All, all political correctness aside, man, this park was called Puff to Park. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the name that it became after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You haven't seen anything <laughs> until you've seen army showers, right? <laughs> oh. You got 30 seconds in cold water to get in, get clean, oh, and get the fuck true. out. And you're just seeing, every, like, you've got maybe 30 dudes all around Australia. And you're just seeing big dick, short dick, <laughs> like, tough 30 dick. 30 seconds. Like, oh, bro. I thought oh. you were heading towards, uh, like, there was a homosexuality element <laughs> to it. Like, it well, it kind of sounds like it is going yeah, that yeah. way. <laughs> There were, there were some big allegedly out there. Six, so nah, well. not even, bro. Right. <laughs> oh, not big. even a bit allegedly. Like it's real. Nah, like it, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, man? They fuck with this. Like it was hot all the way along, all the showers. But then you can. I'm pretty sure they fucking all the seckos or the guys looking who were in charge of us, motherfuckers. <laughs> they turned off the hot water, man, and it was just coming into winter in Wagga Wagga. For in you, Wagga. yeah, oh. you home people down there, that gets cold. Definitely, like cold. Wagga gets real Dude's cold. Dude's just shrinking up left, right, and oh, bro. Oh, but they just brutal. they turned the hot water off for the last like two or three weeks that we were in there, so my showers weren't even. Oh ooh, man, like thirty seconds even. <laughs> They'd have hot showers over in Iraq and and Afghanistan oh, yeah, camps yeah. and stuff oh, like that, but wouldn't they? Minimal. Like we didn't right. we didn't shower much. So what are those camps like? How often would you shower? It just oh man, oh, at one point we did uh, say two months. We just sat on a hill, and we could only come down and shower every week, probably. And, right. and it, it depended uh, on the water stocks because we were coming in, and we would get water trucks delivered, and there was a, a simple plumbing system uh, put up in there, and it would just be it, more for toilets. But we our water would how would it, how would it look, Cookie? Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. What, what would they have set up there, mate? <laughs> st- even if it's simple, I still wouldn't be able to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Plumber, drain a gas for the brown. No, man, but it was real simple, and it was if we had a lot of water, you could shave, shower, shit. If not, um, and when we were out, there was no showering mm. whatsoever, and we'd oh. be out sometimes because we'd go out on a few missions where we'd be gone for a few weeks. And you, your best, your only shower would be a uh, like a makeup wipe. Right. Yeah. So they just bring, ge- ge- they just re- all run off generator power. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What yeah. Was Massive. The, what jennies. was the longest Massive sort of jennies, like uh, yeah. mission that you went on where you were just camping and hiking and you just lived out of a, a bag and a swag or whatever? Do you ever do that? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of weeks. Uh, we a couple just, of weeks. Yeah. A couple of weeks. Fuck. Um, was that part of your training or part of... Um, no, uh, part of um, part of in Afghan. We so were away what did, for a few weeks. What did you camp in? 
um, just a swag off a swag by like it was nearly ten years old. So we've been in Afghan for a while, and this is in two thousand and ten, and people would just leave their swags there, oh. and so these swags have been Recycled. slept in, like sweated in, same as you. But you know what? You didn't even give a shit. Yeah, I was it's not sitting the size of a usual swag, is it? Surely it's smaller so you can hike with it? Because you've got to carry it on no, your back. No, no, I drive, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, I, I tick the box with wheels. So I, um, and you know, good for <laughs> me, though. <laughs> yeah, we, so we drove around them Bushmasters, yeah. look them up. Not the gun type, the fucking, <laughs> the car type. But H- HSV Commodores, man, just straight <laughs> Mate, and you know what? Prius. They weren't just the Bushmasters, they were the fucking Bogmasters, man. <laughs> if they got wet, Bog City, you know? Literally, and you're just like, really. mate, we couldn't do anything. But uh, yeah, honestly, and it was just the towels and I... I Maybe only had a handful of showers while I was gone, like Oof. eight nine months, and my the side of my pillow was disgusting. I bought it when I left and threw it away, and it started out puffy with nice yeah. a few feathers in it, and it just turned into a, a tar wrap. Was that just one continuous deployment that nine yeah, months? Yeah. Fire. Oh no, I went away on. Um, uh, you get two weeks off. Two weeks off yeah, to yeah. come home. Did yeah. you? Oh no, no, two weeks off in between. Did you go absolutely ape shit? Mate, I like I would we went back to TK and I TK. Uh so Tarrant Cout. So I was on What's a patrol that, base. Capital of So we were in um uh Tarrant Cout, it's just a little city in uh Oruzgan. Afghanistan. Yeah, Orozgan province. Yeah. Orozgan and that's province where we in Afghanistan. Yep. Yeah. And so we we were a little bit further out. We were in a base called uh Muzazai first and then Wali. And then, um, so the we did a few months there, but then we would go back. So we would do two weeks away from there and we'd go away. And I went in and we wouldn't be any booze. And it was six months in mm. and we've come back. And, mate, because there's Americans there, they can get you some shit, right? So we've gone back in and this is like fucking Buffalo Soldier type shit. <laughs> like you could just get, like I got fucking... I got some beers and shit and could just drink and just got having just had a couple of beers, just letting down and I got fucked up. Like I didn't have a sip of alcohol in like five or six months yeah. and I was chilling down mm. and I did and I just got smashed. Would you have breaks like in within the time that you deployed or yeah. you Yeah. So there was you, a, there you was have time off to just do nothing in Afghanistan type thing. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't we, leave Afghanistan though. There would it was in Afghan and it wasn't until later, like we were pretty we were active, really active because it was the fighting season. So we'd always be out on patrol and for a patrol for me is in the cars. We mm. would drive around for a bit and we'd maybe go for a few days here and there. But um yeah, man, and it was really active. Like it was, um, and it just got really loud, all that sort of stuff. But it wasn't until later on where it sort of quieted down. Yeah. So there would be like no days that you would just be able to go with your friends to the the shops and then the pub and then nah. you know go get something oh, to nah. eat and whatnot. No. Nah. Nah. The log ride, like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, is there South, a log South, ride here? Somewhere? South Park took the piss out of Vietnam. Where they're <laughs> like, we like Jimbo and Ned on South Park are <laughs> <laughs> like. Yep, I remember he does a uh, school homework assignment like Stan Marsh and like um, Jimbo's his uncle. He's like, <laughs> yeah, we. Was, I remember the day with me and uh, me and Ned, like before, when Ned still had a voice when he's not like, <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Um, he goes, yeah, we slayed the the entire Viet Cong and we made it back in time to get ferry floss and go on the log ride. <laughs> like, he's going back in. No, I'm just going back to the base. <laughs> Get some cotton candy, then like going on this mad log ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so discriminatory to vets, but uh, no. But at this, uh, uh, like we would go. Uh, a few of my mates had got blown up, like just in the cars. They had to go back for a, a um, like more of a scan, and they've mm. got better facilities at uh, not um, Kandahar at Kandahar, and this Kandahar base is set up where they've got a motherfucking uh, Domino's. Uh, yeah, fucking right. Ma- uh, McDonald's, like they—it's a boardwalk, and you've got every fucking uh, fast food there, 
an American fast food, you can get it there on this boardwalk in fucking Kandahar. And how many, like, what would be the the population of soldiers that would oh, like be, in be Kandahar there? is. Oh, it is, is, oh, yeah, massively because it's not just an American base. It's it, you've got all UN or yeah. everyone involved in the conflict. You've got all sort of specialties around there, and it is just it's it like blows your mind. Hub, yeah. We oh. had a we had a coffee shop, and we could get um, really um, basic pizzas and burgers, but they're all in Connexes. So, like this, uh, the the like a a. Um, it's not a real local store. You're walking nah. into something. No, but they actually had uh, so a few locals. Um, they would let in and um, they would sell their own shit. So you could get knives uh, and mm. heroin. Um, may, yeah. Honestly, maybe, maybe you could have got whatever you want. You could what go out. What do you out. reckon it'd be like? Do you reckon it would be even possible to go to Afghanistan? Like if you were to jump on E Dreams or Web, yeah. Webjet or whatever right now. Got one. And look for a flight to no, Afghanistan. I, I would don't you? think it would be. No, for I, I sure. think for sure. Yeah, not for if sure you were just fucking holidaying. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you have to, man. You can, be, you can get into Turkey. You, you could go, go on a flight to Kabul. Yeah, yeah, and that's I, where I, I, you can you can go wherever you want. But like, I would I would imagine like if you went over there, then came back quick, or that'd be your name would come up on that, some. I guarantee. And it's not saying Afghanistan's bad because I'm not saying you could book the ticket, bro. I'm saying that when you got to the airport, you would. The customs would would want a decent reason as to why you were going there, yeah, and and, and maybe like places like Yemen out, or something probably or wouldn't fly yeah. as that yeah. as that. Yeah, no, you would no, actually no. fly into somewhere like Kabul because I think there's only a few places yeah. where. No, you, you'd be like, what's your bu- what's your business there, yeah. sir? Have you got family there? Have you got friends? Australia there? No, would check no. you, bro. Have you got any like mutual interest there? No businesses there. No, I just wanted to go check it out. This is sound. I reckon fuck, you're not going mate, anywhere. They've got a um, customs got a trip, fully check you. trip advisor with hotels, holiday rentals, flights, things to do. One hundred percent, man. And that's yeah. how you see people going yeah, over so there because people still with that are doing like the um, like they're going over and uh, providing aid and everything. They can get in there. Yeah, and th- you know you, they would have a ve- yeah. there'd be a Praise visa. The Lord is Jesus what I'm Christ, saying. you're going over there to convert them to Christians. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> There'd be some sort of visa arrangement with it. Peshmerga, like yeah, that sort yeah, of contract work. Man. Yeah, I'd love to do something like that. I'd love to do contract some sort of like in Afghanistan. Definitely, absolutely. Nice. But with I can knives probably point mainly you, though, like yeah. just make a lot it of throat ultra, attacks. Ultra brutal. Yeah. yeah, I could point you in the right direction. In um, two thousand and three, <laughs> the number of tourists had dropped to a hundred a year. Hundred a year. Tourists. Yeah. Exactly, man. You're telling me Holy they can't shit. they can't screen a hundred yeah. people. Gonna, Fuck yeah, they're they not going to question you like, hey, yeah, man, yeah. You see, Afghan 2018. Yeah. Gonna yeah. Have yeah. Although there would be match, like, <laughs> there would be a lot of dudes lo- out lo- in the Middle East, a lot savages. safer spots than others, though. Yeah. In terms of flying into, like you said, you'd be able to fly into Turkey and all that sort of stuff. Still, I'm sure. Main uh, event UFC Afghanistan, like Musad Bektik McGregor, like yeah, he's, he's, he's Bosnian. Is there a yeah. is there a Turkish fighter? Same is there a Turkish allegedly. fighter? <laughs> <laughs> is there a Turkish fighter? <laughs> Throwing out hoofs and race and oh, all sorts of shit. Yeah, we've, hey, most is, of them on my behalf. I must admit. Yeah. Is there a Turkish fighter? No. Turkish? No nah. Turks. Mustafa El Turk, yeah. but he got he got his ass cut after one of the, one of the first ever UFCs we ever watched was downstairs at your parents' place, and we watched Czech Congo rain of, murder on um, Mustafa El Turk. Like. One of the heaviest leg kicks in the sport, mm. bro. That he went, how he used to throw him. Yeah, but uh, he got Czech Congo took him down and elbowed the fuck out of him that day. Turned him yeah. into like one of the first crime scenes we ever oh, saw. Shit, yeah. Absolutely, good times. Mm. <laughs> seen many a crime scene since too. Oh, Shout out Bigfoot so Silver many. Kane Velasquez. I still still maintain that the biggest crime scene that I've ever seen is Chris Weidman, Mark Munoz. Like that that mm. to me is the latest stoppage that a, a, a UFC fight has ever been stopped. Yeah. To the point where you're like, bro, he's dead. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> well, like, were you, well, like were you stop, stop, yeah. stop. He's well, yeah. What about dead. that Australia card? There was so much blood on that, Matt. That was, Australia card yeah. in the UFC fight night, man. That. There was a lot of blood left on that. Sometimes map. a lot of blood Something doesn't tell the, the damage. Fucking though. Fox cards, man. They just oh, seem to get mm. some of the most violent crime scenes and oh. like bad, horrific injuries that they don't show and mm. stuff like that. So, oh, Remember, no. who was the dude that broke his ankle real bad, but oh, sort of yeah, fought Jamie through Varner. it? Yeah. Jamie, Jamie Varner. Varner. Yeah. Oh. 
he would just spent a whole round just sort of flopping his ankle and then locking it into place and just planting that back leg. Like he that knew that it was been inside some Barboza. Yeah, it was. I think. Yeah, he was oh. getting after him Nasty. too. Oof. Yeah, savage, savage fucking injuries. Holy oh shit. yeah, absolutely. We've seen some horrific ones. Well, every hoe and trick out there <laughs> is fucking <laughs> 2016. Let's face it, call a spade a spade. It's been a fucking home run year for the knockoff. We're off the ground officially. No, we missed out on the home run with the tech fail and that sort of shit. But 2017, we guarantee those fans we're going to keep on going. Shout we out got- to our sponsors. Shout out to the fans. Anybody who's listened to one along the way. Props. If you've liked a photo on Instagram, whatevs. That's it. We and appreciate it, the love. If you've ever... Uh, and if you heard any of us, anyone throw anyone under the bus on here, yeah, fuck you. Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Anyone yeah, we're gonna, sorry. Yeah. If you yeah. want to be down with them, yeah. then fuck you too. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> If you're under the bus, you're still under the bus with us. You get one shot, bitches. We'd Chris. like to apologise to absolutely nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As Connor would say, man. Amen. Boys, B-Rad, Benny, Kyle, thanks for coming on. Here's for uh, another couple of guest spots in 2017, I dare say. Danny, Chris, hell of a year, man. It's been, a, been an out-and-out pleasure. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, bitches. <laughs>